Time now for News Extra, brought to you today by First State Bank. Here's Kevin Mooney. Thank you, Dennis. Good morning, everyone. Karen Anderson and Jim Trumbull are here. We're going to talk about the 1.5% sales tax that you're going to uh, review on your November ballot. Consider... And uh, uh, this uh, city sales tax has been in existence now for about 20 years. Every 10 years, though, it is up for renewal. And so we're going to talk about that. Uh, Karen, I guess first thing about this uh, sales tax is that it is a renewal. It's not a right. not a new tax, right? That's right. It was on the ballot 10 years ago. It sunsets. So the voters get to choose every 10 years, and I think that's a great thing. You'll see Proposition 1, which is the actual sales tax of 1.5%, and then Proposition 2, which is a plan for economic growth. Now, the important thing with this tax is that it is major for property tax relief. 83% of the funds go to property tax relief, and 16% goes to economic development. So... The other wonderful thing is everyone who purchases things in Scottsbluff pays. So 50% comes from non-residents. That's true, because we are the the retail trade center. Right. And so we get people in from Alliance, Torrington, all over the place, really, right. all over the panhandle and eastern Wyoming. And so uh, uh, a lot of this tax is paid by other people. Right. And uh, also the other thing is the sale without this sales tax, uh, you're looking at a major property tax increase because uh, the general fund, I mean, the sales tax pays for much of what's in the general fund. Police, fire, all your utilities, right? 52% right? of the revenues come from this tax. So it's a great tool that lowers your property tax and gives us economic development. Yep, Scott's Bluff has not raised its property tax. They may have raised the property tax asking because valuations have gone up. But the actual levy itself, they've not raised that for years and years and years and years. Partly because it says so on this on this ballot initiative. Right. All right. So, um, so anyway, so you're uh, saying make sure you vote yes. Oh, huh? yes, yes. One, two. Renew, renew. Renew. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to talk to Jim about LB840 and the benefits of the LB840 program for the city of Scotts Bluff in the area right after this. There are no shortcuts when it comes to financial success. It takes a lot of hard work, doing without, and saving money even when you don't want to. You have to make more money than you spend and then hang on to some of it. So the next time you hear about some surefire investment, just remember, if it sounds too good to be true, it usually is. First State Bank, member FDIC. We're big on you. We're back on News Extra, and we're talking to Karen Anderson with the Scotts Bluff Caring Chamber and Jim Trumbull, who is the uh, chair of the LB840 committee and uh, the application committee. There's two committees. There's a Citizens Review Committee and an Application Committee, and Jim's chair of the Application Committee. So, uh, Jim, when we talk about being chair of the Application Committee, what does your committee do? Well, and first, like you said, Kevin, uh, the economic growth part that Karen mentioned, that is LB840, which the voters would probably recognize more from things in the media. The Application Review Committee, really, to put it in, in a real simple, functions simply more like a lending a- a- agency. Uh, the applicants come in. They provide information of the project, uh, what's going to go on, jobs created, funding required, capital assets being grown, uh, land acquired, buildings built. And then we basically assess that and their ability to perform based on past and future performance and then make a recommendation to city council from there. If the application goes through, as you mentioned, the Citizens Review Committee, they on an annual basis audit those companies to make sure they're meeting the performance goals that they said they would uh, to get that funding grants that we've granted them. And it works well because uh, there are times when the Citizens Review Committee says, hey, these guys aren't meeting the goals. And you guys say you're not meeting the goals and you you need to return some money back, right? You know, and that has happened in years past. One of the things that both of both committees believe, and I think the city council agrees with, is yes, we, we want to make sure we're, we're financially uh, meeting the, the needs of what the program is supposed to do, but we want to make sure those jobs stay here. So we've had uh, companies who have not met the requirements at the end of their term, and we've extended those timelines because we want to keep those jobs here. So it, it really has worked out well for the companies, and I think for the citizens of Scottsbluff to create and keep jobs here. 
All right. Some of the, um, uh, boy, you have a list of companies here that have uh, uh, taken advantage of LB840. There's just a lot of them. You, you know, we went through and had the opportunity to talk to city council here a couple of weeks ago. And as I made the comment earlier on the FM side, as I watched the FedEx ground uh, delivery guy walk in the door. That's actually Klein Family Trucking, which is a local family here. Uh, as they expanded their routes uh, locally here and throughout the Panhandle, they took LB840 application money and expanded that. Uh, one of our local communication companies, Allo, startup uh, obviously based out of Imperial, but uh, put in offices here in Scotts Bluff. Uh, LB840 application. Uh, CS Precision, located in Gearing. Again, we do fund outside the city limits of Scotts Bluff. Uh, they've started out with a ground-up operation, committed to 33 jobs. They now have 50 employees in that building, and Scott's done a great job expanding that business. So some real great success stories, which is why to renew this, uh, as Karen said, is, is really important to the city of Scotts Bluff. Yeah, Kurt Manufacturing is another one of those outside uh, Scotts Bluff, and yet uh, they've used LB840 to expand. You bet. As, as Karen and you both alluded to, obviously, being a trade center for retail, uh, I think the committee and council has always felt that growth not only in the city of Scottsbluff but in the surrounding area is important for the success of also those communities but also the city of Scottsbluff to keep growing and moving forward. So yes, we do look at applications outside the city limits. All right. So um, do we have any idea how many jobs per se have have been added over the over the time frame of LB840? You know, we've probably had approximately 36 applicants receive money since the program began in 95, and, and probably 1,200 jobs approximately have been created since then. That's pretty good. So that's the reason why uh, you'd like to see people renew, renew. Huh? Uh, it is important, and obviously as we've got a new economic plan coming on board with the city here in the next couple months, uh, we want to make sure we're ready to go forward with that plan and that we have funding in place to be able to work with local companies and, again, attract out-state or in-state companies outside the area to come uh, relocate here and bring their families and jobs here. All right. So uh, that's the reason why uh, these folks are saying you vote yes and you vote yes. It's pretty simple. You look at it and you just vote renew, renew, and and the tax moves on. And uh, it really has worked out fairly, really well for uh, the city of Scotts Bluff and its citizens to this point. So uh, thank you, guys. Appreciate you coming in. Thanks for the time. Thanks, Kevin.